All right, all right, all right, all right. Uh, good evening once again, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you're tuning in. Welcome to this episode um, of the X Space, uh, where we're going to be talking about how to increase your value in 2024. We are in 2023, I'm talking about 2024. Okay, if you have an accent, it's 2024. So, a um, couple of uh, housekeeping rules. Um, one is uh, please make sure that you share this link with someone that uh, you know will benefit from this. And then um, the other thing is uh, the hashtag for today is value2024. Again, the hashtag is value2024. Okay, so that's uh, you you can you can do that, and then uh, please send your questions. The Twitter handle is at consult Sudesh. Consult Sudesh is one word. Yeah, it's on uh, X or formerly Twitter. Uh, please send your questions in line with uh, what I'm going to be sharing today. And uh, for those that will stay until the end, I promise you two things. One, uh, I'll announce a very special guest that we are going to have on the 7th of November 2023. And then uh, I'll give you another uh, one surprise for those, only for those that will stay until the end. Okay, so with that said, ladies and gentlemen, let's get into which, um, like I told you, our topic for today is... Uh, we're going to be talking about this thing called value value what what, what is value you know uh so before i go any further my name is uh, sudesh kaka uh, the team leader sudesh international consult where we help forward thinking leaders uh gain fulfillment through clarity and innovation so that they may turn a profit and increase the impacts that they give in their own lives so with that said, I know you, you, going back to our topic on how to increase your value in 2024, here is what you can expect. I know most of you have heard of things like, you know, value for money, value addition, value chain, okay? So we're going to be looking at answering a couple of questions. What is value? Why should you and I care about value? How can you increase your value in the coming year, okay? So um what is value and why does it matter anyway let's start from there okay so this is what i want you to do um if you're seated somewhere and you're not driving you can open a page on your phone in your notebook if you're driving you can do this mentally if you're writing you, you know you can open a, a, a fresh sheet of paper because now I'm defining value, okay? I'm defining value and, and uh, what it means. Because before I actually go into it, no, but let's, let me first define what value is, okay? So this is what I want you to do and it will show you, it, it, I'll build on it. I want to make it as simple as possible, but also profound for you to understand what value is and what it means to increase value and how that, uh, how that affects you positively um for the better good so i want you to write how much money you've made between uh between january and october 2023 write down how much money you've made from january to october 2023 okay have you written down that figure good if you don't know estimates okay after you've written down that figure, this is what I want you to do. I want you to multiply it by 10. Okay, so let's say you've made, let's say up to this particular point in time from January up to, up to October, going into November, you've made 10 million shillings, okay? Multiply that by 10. What do you get? Okay, in this case, for the example that I'm using, it will be 100 million. Okay, so multiply what you've made up to this point by 10 million. Remember, we are talking about value. 
this will help you understand value after you've multiplied that then i want you to take the figure that you got when you multiplied by 10 ah, now the people that don't love mathematics are saying <laughs> what are you talking about just just give me money i know how to count money no this is simple arithmetic it will help you understand what we are talking about so 10 times 10 let's say you get 100 okay and then i want you to take that last figure which is 100 million the one that you've multiplied by 10 and then subtract the money you've made thus far okay so if you take a hundred million and subtract 10 what is the balance the balance is 90 90 million okay so in your case what is your balance you don't have to tell me just look at it and then i want you to ask yourself a question why Now, if I multiply uh, up to October, from January to October, if I multiply that by 10, I have 100, then uh, 100 minus 10, I have 90. So what the question I would ask Peter, if I was coaching him on value, I would ask him, Peter, why didn't you make the extra 90 million? And the answer is as simple as Peter did not create enough value to warrant him to earn the extra 90 million that is a simple illustration of what value is now who am i why am i talking about uh value how, how am i qualified to talk about value uh, you know I, I was just i was just looking at uh, as i was preparing for this uh uh this session i was i was looking through over the years where i've come from and in 2013 that's about uh, uh that's about 10 years ago, uh, if you invited me to speak uh, to your team, okay, for a full day, you know, I charged, I charged anywhere between 200 to $250, okay? So $250 for a full day in 2013, that means that my one hour was worth $10.41 per hour, okay? Today, Today, if you invited me to speak to your team for a full day, my value has gone up, okay, by 92%. Yeah? My value has gone up by 92%. That means I've gone from I've gone from $10.41 per hour to $145.8 per hour. That's a 135.4 uh increase in uh, the hourly rates okay now question is do i um is this money charged because i've done this thing for long no 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 it's not charged because i've done this thing for for long it's charged because i've added so much value to myself yeah it has taken time but that is what i get to to be rewarded for and that's what we get to be rewarded for as a team yeah and uh, I did not say that. That was said by a gentleman called Jim Rohn. He said that we get paid for bringing value in the marketplace. It takes time, but we get paid for the value, not the time. Guess what? You don't. Uh, and, I, and I get this uh, this thing all the time, and, and it comes from uh, traditional workplaces where someone will ask for a pay rise because they've been with the organization for three or five years. Okay, experience is not how long you've spent doing a thing. Experience is the value that you bring to the work every day. That means that I could have five years experience in one year or I could have uh, one year experience in 10 years. It's about the value that you bring. Remember, we get paid for bringing value in the marketplace. It takes time, but we get paid for the value, not the time. Okay. Um, I hope I'm, I'm still going slow before I build on it and it will help you understand what value is all about. Now, speaking of value, the customer rarely buys what the company thinks it is selling him or her. That's uh, said by Peter Drucker. So, you know, now I, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, you know what, Sudesh, I'm, I don't own a business. I have a job. So this whole thing of a customer. No, you actually 
you know if your gen your 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 gen limited okay and that means you offer your services to a company and in exchange the company gives you whatever they value your services to be worth okay if they value your services to be worth 500,000 they will pay you the 5000 500,000 if they value your services to be worth 5 million they will pay you the 5 million if they value it to be worth $10,000 which is about 37 36 million they will pay you that much okay so but in this essence why are you exactly selling them because if you do not understand how to define value then you're not going to know how to increase it and you're not going to know how to attract what comes with value which is usually what we see at the end of it which is the money so to illustrate what value is all about um i i'm reminded of a time uh when i i you know i needed to make some money it was uh it was christmas season and uh, there's this church uh downtown kampala it's called uh watoto or what some people call it wararo okay um so what happened was uh, what happened was uh i needed to make some money and uh when uh when i got on um I got to find out that uh, you know there's they, this uh, during Christmas season they they have around seven days where they show the Christmas they have a Christmas production that they call Cantanta and it um, on average 1,500 they have about three shows in a day um, and every show has about 1,500 you add on the 500 volunteers that show up that means that on a daily uh on a daily you have about uh, 2000 people showing up okay so no actually 5000 people because you have three shows 1000 people per show that is 4500 plus the 500 volunteers that's 5000 people so if you have 5000 people showing up and they this they're running this show for 5 days that means you have 25000 people showing up during that week now here is where it gets very interesting. So you have 25,000 people showing up. What are the 25,000 people going to need? Those 25,000 people are going to need sanitation that is catered for by Watoto as a church. These, uh, they, they are going to need security that is catered for by the church. The other thing, the, the, uh, the thing that the church does not offer are things like refreshments. So they ask for vendors to buy a license and provide something so i i you know i talked to a friend he's called john uh john and i put together you know we invested about 200 dollars looking back that's around seven hundred thousand. um got uh got a license you know they uh, they give you a free space in a tent and everything and um i i did something i you know i did my research and found out that you know if you sell if i sell you a bag of popcorns okay um if i sell you a bag of popcorns let's say at five thousand shillings i'm making a margin of a hundred percent that means if i sell you a a, a bag of popcorn at five thousand i'm making two thousand five hundred shillings off that bag that includes everything that goes into the popcorn you know paying the guys that are vending the oil the everything the electricity is free so i so i got to find out that on popcorn i would make a hundred percent and then uh, the other product that was fast moving was juice i'd make around seven seventy percent margins and so we put up you know the the uh we the days come and we put up everything we start uh, we start selling our popcorn and juice uh now interestingly we were not the only ones that were clever <laughs> the, the other guys had i don't know whether they they knew what they were doing but they were selling so you had, you had about four or five vendors selling the same exact thing so they have popcorn and juice the other guys have popcorn the other guys have juice so i mean these are hot days so everyone can sell out but you know we needed to maximize because the more you sell the bigger the volumes and the more money you make okay so 
what we did was um, um, we needed to create value, but we're not going to sell popcorn and juice to everyone, or else we're going to be like the rest of the guys. So on the first day, we did not do so well, but we observed the trend and we observed that um, what they did for Cantanta, if uh, a, a lady came with her children, you know, a mother comes with the children, they would give them uh, they would give them first priority. That means that those people would walk in first. Okay, so a mother walks in with about three children, and then if you're a single person in a line, you will stay there forever. Not just single, but if you do not come with kids, or you you know you're married but you don't have kids, and you do not come with them, you just stay in the line. Okay, so we got to find out that oh, okay, these were total guys. They give, uh, they give first priority to mothers and children or anyone that has come with children, okay? What do children like? Because now we needed to recreate our value. We said children like to have a park-like experience. So we said on top of just selling popcorn, um, on the next day I go out, uh, talk to a guy that does face painting. Uh, the guy comes, he paints all our faces. I wish I was... I was showing you this on screen. I'll show you how my face was painted. So, you know, we're a group of about four people. Our faces are painted and, you know, we have juice for the kids and we have juice for the mothers and uh, the popcorns are there. And when the kids come in and they see a painted face and then they see you just putting on an apron, where are they going to be drawn? They are going to be drawn to the guy with a painted face. Okay, so the kids would come, hey, mommy, I want to paint my face, mommy, I want to paint my face. Now, as we sit down, the guy who is painting the, the face is, you know, we, we tell him, you know, you're painting every face for around 3,000 shillings. We want 1,500 out of that. But as he's painting the face, we, we tell the kid, hey, do you want some juice? Do you want some popcorn? We sell to the mother. You know, we go out with our painted faces with popcorns in the boxes. As they are coming in, we are receiving them. We are singing. We are doing all these sorts of things. And we created so much value that on average, on average, we made a profit of around $700 every day. Yeah, I don't want to put this in Ugandan shillings because we have other people on this that are not Uganda. So we made about seven hundred dollars. Now multiply that on average by five, you get around three thousand five hundred dollars in a week. Is it not good money in a week? In one week, not even a week, five days. Is it not good money? That's good money. What did we do? We created value. Okay. But before we created value, we had to understand what was value to the mother walking in what was value to the child coming in and how are we going to approach them how are we going to speak to them in ways that are anticipated and personal and get them to buy from us because of the value that we are creating for them okay i hope you're understanding what value is now the other example that i want to give you about uh, value is uh, there's a country in brazil uh, uh, there's a country in south america called brazil and Brazil has a city, the capital city is called Rio de Janeiro. Rio de Janeiro has a huge population. They have, they have a, a huge problem with traffic jam to the extent that all the rich people don't really own cars. They own helicopters. So if you're a rich person in Rio, you fly from, um, you fly from, um, from your house and then onto the launching pad on top of the building where you work and then you work and then at the end of the day you get into the heli and it takes you home believe me or not such lives exist you know not 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 everyone gets on a border to go to work okay <laughs> so in rio people spend a lot of time in jam an average person can take four hours a day commuting to work you know going to work and then coming back home so if if someone is spending two hours on the road um that means that they will get to work probably late okay and then they have to work they have to leave work quite early because they have to pick the kids from school take the kids home help them to do homework and then have dinner with them put them to bed and do that all over again and do that next week and the other week and you know that cycle goes on and on and on so 
what McDonald's discovered in uh, Rio de Janeiro is that um, these people that were going to work, uh, the good people that woke up to go and work, they would buy milkshakes. However, um, though they bought the milkshakes, the the sales in milkshakes tremendously dropped. And so what they did was, um, you know, they, they did what most businesses do. You know, they brought in a focus group. So you bring in a, a middle-aged person, then you bring in a young person, then you bring, a, bring in a, a, a health-conscious old person, then you bring in a fat person, you bring in a thin person, and you sit there, you give them uh, milkshakes. You know, this one you give banana milkshake, this one you give a chocolate chip milkshake, and they told them, uh, what do you want us to improve about our, our milkshakes? And the answers went from add some sugar, reduce some sugar, add chocolate chips, make it thicker, make it lighter, um, make the container bigger, reduce the size of the container. And they did everything that the focus groups were telling them. That increased the sales by around 11%. But that wasn't what they were looking for. They were looking for something that was absolutely outstanding. So what they did was they started studying the value chain. Okay. They studied the what? The value chain. Okay. So this is what was happening. So they, they put their secret people to follow up the people that buy the milkshakes. And they found out that the people that buy the milkshakes are on the road by around 5.30 a.m. Okay. They drop off their kids at school at around 6 a.m. And then they pick a milkshake and then they spend an extra two hours, get to work at around 9. And then because they go there at 9, they have to catch up and work and then want to leave at 4. Okay, So that means they don't have time for a lunch break and everything. And they said, okay, guys, how can we create value for you? And they said, uh, we want something. We want a milkshake that can replace me getting lunch okay so that i can put in all the work so that i can spend time with my family so the value that the milkshake created wasn't that of recreation where you just go and sit put your hands on your chin and then you take a milkshake as you're talking sweet nothings with your friend no the milkshake in this case for the average person in rio de janeiro uh, was a replacement for a meal. Actually, not a meal, two meals. Okay? That means breakfast and lunch. So that milkshake needed to be heavy, but not so heavy. It needed to have less sugar because you don't want the person to have a lot of downtime. So what they did is that they, you know, they, they created, they recreated the milkshake, reduced the sugar, did all these things, made it thicker, and, uh, and then provided a glass of, uh, I mean, a bottle of water on the side to dilute it just in case. Um, and because these people were waking up early, they, uh, they started, McDonald's started opening their, their restaurants in Rio at 5.30 a.m. Before they were opening at 6.30, okay? So they were missing lots of sales. So they opened at 6, at 5.30 and guess what? Their sales went up by 45%. Now, that is huge, ladies and gentlemen. What did McDonald's do? What did John and I do? We created value for a certain group of people. And that's what it, that, that's what it all takes, okay? I hope you're learning something. Now, speaking of value, um, speaking of value, uh, I w we have a word from our sponsors today. I remember... Uh, when we founded Sudesh International Consult 11 years ago, our goal was to bring fulfillment to forward-thinking leaders. Fast forward in 2023, we have coached many experts. Actually, here's a testimonial of uh, one of them. is called Kenneth Mohanji. Uh, Kenneth is an expert with the World Bank. Uh, he was the former managing partner of KTA. He's an advisor on uh, the ICT Commission and Ministry of uh, ICT in Uganda. Kenneth says that Sudesh is a magician at instilling culture and creating strategies. His sessions have really helped me as a leader and a person to increase the value that I provide. I highly recommend him and his team. So what we made available for Kenneth is what we are making available to you through the Velocity Experience uh, Executive Coaching Series. 
that are designed to give you productivity strategies, okay, like some that I'm sharing today, to help you refine your personal motivation because if you're not fired up, if you don't know what, why you're doing what you're doing, you're going to give up when things get tough and they will get tough, okay? It will also help you to double your income in 12 months. How do we know that? You know, we've doubled our revenue year over from around 2017 and uh, moving forward. So we know what it takes, okay? Um, if this is something that you're interested in, please reach out to our DMs, our direct messages on Twitter. Send us a message. The poster is on our uh, on our X, X what page at Consult Sudesh. And we'll be glad to get back to you um, in terms of providing uh, experiences like we've provided for people like Kenneth Mohanji that have gone on. Oh, by the way, what I did not tell you about Kenneth Mohanji, when we coached him and I, I directly coached him, he uh, within one within one or two years, he went on to become the managing partner of the year in Africa for uh, for law firms. Uh, that award is given on a continental level. He went on to become that, and he had never even had a nomination before. So we know what we are talking about. This stuff is absolutely important. So uh, for those that are interested, please DM for the. For, for details on the Velocity Experience coaching series. So, continuing, um, talking about value. So, what is value? Thus far, I've given you examples of what value is, how you can create value. So, value is something that you hold, that is held to deserve importance, worth, or usefulness of something. The reason, the reason almost all of you if i look here the reason all of you are on this call is because you know you've received value either from a training you've received value from uh, uh, me coaching you before or you've re of your or you've come to these spaces over and over again and uh something has been shared that has been valuable and you've thought about it and you've gone and applied it and it has made sense and that is why you're back okay so Something that you hold that that you you hold to deserve importance, worth, or usefulness, that is value. Okay. Now, moving on. Um, remember, I'm just defining what value is. Value can be uh, can be described uh, based on the principle of rarity. Rare eh? is that the correct pronunciation? Rarity. Okay. And the principle says that scarcity creates value. Scarcity creates value. So, you know, things like diamonds, gold, silver, oil, rare minerals, all those things have a high value because they are rare. You know, you don't walk on, on the streets and then you pick gold unless you're walking in, in heaven. And if you're walking in heaven, you wouldn't be on this call right now. You'd be listening to some other podcast. <laughs> Anyway, so those things, diamonds, gold, silver, oil, those are scarce and we give them a lot of value. Conversely, things like water, you know, you know how much, how much, how, how valuable water is, you know, do you know? Okay. If you live in Uganda, 1000 liters by national, uh, national water and sewage corporation costs around 3000 around 3,700 shillings. 1,000 liters of water costs 3,700, okay? 1,000 liters of mercury, do you know how much they cost? <laughs> they cost a lot of money. Now, why is water cheap and mercury expensive? Because mercury is rare. Water is everywhere you go. You know, you dig the ground, you're in the swamp, you'll see water. You open your tap, there's water. You go to the shop, there is water, okay? So, there's that principle of royalty where, that says scarcity creates value and it can determine the value of something. You know, um, people don't want to pay for things that are readily available and you can see that uh, in an area, if you have, let's say, one saloon, it can charge you highly. But when seven or eight of them open up, usually the price does what? It goes down. Why? Because... That, that is how value works. 
another way in which value works is um and i hope you're getting uh value from uh from this uh another way in which value works is um let's say let's say you i own a mango i own a they call it what an orchard yeah uh, yeah I, I own an orchard you come into my orchard and there are all these mango trees and then you're so hungry and you look for the first mango and you eat it that first mango has a high level of value but let's say down the line you, you eat the second the third the fourth the fifth the sixth this by the time you get it to the seventh mango it won't have as much value as the first one okay and usually you'll just eat a bit of it and then you throw it away what has happened over time what has happened over time is because value does not appreciate by just taking in more of something like in this case if you take in more of the mangoes by the time you get to the seventh mango it is not as valuable as the first you know that is called diminishing marginal utility for those of you that went to uh ac economics class you remember what diminishing marginal utility so that is how value operates now moving on um and i uh I hope you, you're submitting your questions. Moving on, um, how do I increase my value? That, that's a question I want you to ask. What, what, what's your plan for increasing your value in 2024? Yeah, I think it was Albert Einstein that says, that said, try not to become a person of success, but rather try to become a person of value. Like I told you, you know, in 2013, my value my value was around 10.41 dollars per hour right now my value has gone up to about uh, not about uh, it has gone up to 145.8 dollars per hour so that means that the value has increased by 92 percent okay how has it increased it has increased because i've added so much value to me and this is what i want to share with you so if you have a pen and paper if you have a, a if you, if you have somewhere to, to write, if you can record, I would ask you that you record because what I'm about to share is absolutely, uh, it's absolutely, mwah, it's, it's, uh, it's, these are things that have taken me 10, 11 years to develop, but I'm sharing them with you, okay? So, how do you increase value for yourself? Number one, you have to face the brutal truth, okay? And here are some of the brutal truths that low value people hate. You know, people, if, if you've seen someone, you know, this year, this year they, they are earning 10 million, the next year they earn 3 million, the other year they earn uh, uh, 1 million. You know, such people, they, 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 there's, a, there's a level of truth that they are not exposed to and hence they cannot increase their value. I remember one time I'm coaching this guy, and this is a true story. Um, this guy, he has a degree, smart guy, puts on a tie, um, goes to church, prays to God. And this guy, for a full year, he had made 3 million shillings. I'm not kidding you. 3 million shillings. Now, if you divide 3 million shillings by 12, what do you have? Uh, now, for the people that don't like mathematics, I don't know what to do for you. But, um, you know, 3 million shillings, uh, that would come to, to about what? You, you tell me what the answer is, but it's not a lot of money. So, for a full year, he had made 3 million shillings. Now, needless to say, if you've made 3 million shillings in a full year, what kind of house do you rent? Crappy house. What kind of food do you eat? You eat the leftovers that uh, Mama Chazike and uh, <laughs> and uh, you know and uh, and, and over who uh, you know you know you like you you don't live a good life. You know you hold a cheap phone. You probably uh, you probably don't have a, a satellite TV at your house. You're not driving a car. You're sitting in uh, uh, some taxi every day why because you, you just don't have the money uh to to have the niceties of life okay so this guy has made he had made about three million shillings he comes and i coach him and within one month 
he had made three million shillings. I am not kidding you. <laughs> he had made he had made three million shillings in a year. I coached him within one month. He had made three million shillings. I mean, the money got to his head. He disappeared. Stopped coming for coaching. Um, he thought, okay, he wasn't. He wasn't paying me a lot of money, but he thought the best way to pay me was to buy me lunch. And I told him, no, 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 no. Look, there's there are about seven or eight things that I haven't shared with you that are going to help you to consistently get that value. Okay. He goes away. Six months later, he had gone back to a worse place. Why? Because he became a low value person because he was not exposed to the truth that I'm about to share with you. Okay. This is the truth that low value people hate okay and i'll rush through this quickly because our time is fast spent number one is that low value people think that all people are equal guess what we are not equal we are not equal you know i know something more than you do you know something more than i do you live in a much better place than i do i live in a much better place than some other person there's someone ahead of you there's someone below you that is how the world operates we are not equal now why is this important for you to know when you're adding value to yourself it's important to know that the people that have more value than you you esteem them so that you can learn from them and the people with whom you have more value it is important for them to come and subject themselves to you so that you can teach them so number one we are not equal number two if emotions control your value addition you are lost if if you know you go to work only when um if you go to guess what horses replace cars because horses are emotional cars are not emotional cars will show up when it's raining horses won't go in the rain okay so low value people only show up when it suits them high value people show up when it doesn't suit them they will show up when they cannot string two sentences together i don't know how many times you know we started doing these uh, spaces so many months ago and sometimes i could just be on the space me and my team and i'm thinking my emotions would be like ah oh, man do you still have to continue doing this and it took us about 12 sessions for us to even sell one product of this if i was highly emotional i wouldn't still be doing this okay the other truth that low value people hate to know is that your appearance makes a difference hey yeah they said do not judge a book by its cover guess what we live in a world that judges books by their covers if you want to be taken seriously then take yourself seriously show up like you really matter okay it is impossible for you to behave in a manner that is contrary in the way that you see yourself. Yeah, that is Zig Ziglar who said that. And if you believe you're worthless, you won't add value to yourself. You know, you, you won't dress up and dress nicely. You won't research. You won't go back to school. You won't finish studies. You won't apply for that job. You won't start that business. Why? Because you that is how you see yourself. And third, uh, character matters guys guess what things like keeping time those things matter and then the other thing that low value people hate to know is that life is about your decisions guess what you made a decision to be here and that decision has exposed you to things that are going to benefit you there's someone that did not make a decision to be here and it's not going to benefit them you made a decision to go to school you finished school you made a decision to apply for the job you made a decision to get married you made a decision to start the business you made a decision to do whatever you're doing so life is about decisions okay the other truth that brutal truth that low value people hate is that money matters guess what guys money matters never kid yourself that money doesn't matter even the there's a, a catholic uh, sect it's called uh, missionaries of the poor missionaries of the poor drive cars missionaries of the poor live in the best monasteries missionaries of the poor give out money money matters it solves a lot of things okay um and then the other thing the other thing is uh that low value people hate is that life is a race not a sprint it's not a sprint you're not running it 
and uh, in in 10 seconds no it has it has seasons and you have to make those seasons but what by what you invest in yourself right now like i told you experience is not the amount of time that it takes you to do something experience is the value that you put in the time okay the other thing that uh, uh the brutal truth that low value people hate to hear is that people wear masks especially on social media people wear masks all the time they post hd pictures they show you uh, uh how they were on vacation in this place they never show you their struggles okay why is that important that is important to you to stop comparing yourself because of a glossy picture that you saw of someone that is in a car uh, that is worth 500 million and uh, for you you're in a taxi you know they could have sat in someone's car and they are just taking a picture just like the rappers in the US they they just borrow cars or rappers here okay the other brutal truth that uh, that low value people hate to know is that um happiness equals progress you know you know you know that goal that you have you know you want you want to finish a masters you want to you want to get married you want to construct that house you you want to start that business you want to travel you want to take your children to these schools you, you know you have all sorts of things you want to do a b c d up to z and then do it all over again and the question is not the question the reality is when you do those things and you get to the end of it all you will discover that those things don't really make you happy okay if you're not happy before you get the money you're not going to be happy when you get the money okay you're going to be a sad person with money but if you're happy because you're making the progress then that is how you add value to yourself okay so a quick test i give to to the people that i coach is um uh list down all the areas of your life i uh, you know look at the spiritual life look at the financial look at your marriage look at uh career abcd and then look at the areas where you're making progress chances are high you're happy in those areas and look at the areas where you are not making progress chances are high you're not happy you know so happiness Oh progress equals happiness actually progress equals happiness not the other way around and then low value people never want to know that activity is not productivity it's not about how much you know that matters it's about what you do with how much you know that matters at the end of the day it's not about you doing and doing and doing and doing what are you doing okay january started this is um this is october we're coming to december and at the end of the year when you look over the year what have you really done with yourself okay what have you uh what are you uh what have you really done with yourself okay so activity is not productivity and the other thing that uh, low value people hate to know is that you have one life to live hey, guess what you don't have two lives you die today we'll never hear from you you'll be gone adios 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 okay so If you know that you have one life to live, how do you treat it? You know, you invest a lot in yourself, you make sure that every minute count, you don't tolerate bullshit. You you know, you you live it like every day counts. And the other thing, the other last thing that low value people don't want to know is that the world will go on without you. Guess what? When I was young, um when I was young, I I I, I witnessed uh, the death of the pope you know i think it was pope john paul who died and man the way i held this guy in esteem i thought when this pope guy dies the world is going to come to a standstill like we're not going to eat and what guess what the day the pope died we ate we slept we were happy and life moved on okay now why is this important for you to know It's important for you to know that the world will move on without you but let the world move on let the, as the world moves on without you what is your contribution to that world what games of wisdom did you leave what investment did you make in your children 
what uh what what is what inheritance did you give them what uh seeds did you sow in people how did you treat people those are all things that high value people should be thinking about but that low value people never think about i hope you're getting a uh, value out of uh out of this chat um and uh, uh please make sure that uh, i can see uh, some people are struggling with the network but we'll make sure that we send you a recorded version uh edited and uh, crispy sound so that you can re really listen to this okay so going to our last part um now that i've shared what val- low value people don't like to know i think it's time for me to share what three things that you can do to increase value you know there are not 100 things they're not 70 things they are they're not it's not one thing there are three and these have worked in my life okay so there are three categories in which you can increase value to yourself and you can write this down okay the first category is these are what we call the three s's okay you know you have to have strategies that increase value to yourself the second is that you have to tell yourself a story that increases value to yourself you change your story you change your life and third you have to be in a state i'm going to tell you what state is all about okay so you have strategies the story and the state strategies story and state if you can master those three things you'll increase value to yourself how do i know these are things that i've used personally okay now people do not have a strategy problem if you go to google right now and uh, put in 10 ways to increase value to myself it will bring you around 700 pages and you can <laughs> you you know you can look at that and increase value to yourself okay so people don't have a strategy problem per se okay um but people have problems with the other two the story and the state okay so i'm not going to spend a lot of time on strategies but i'm going to spend a little bit of time on strategy i i mean i'm going to spend a little bit of time on strategies and then most time on the story and the state okay so um quick uh, around 10 or 11 strategies that can help you to increase value to yourself number one become an observer always look like i told you you know uh the first day i'm at cantanta i looked and saw how many people are coming in which people are, g- are being given precedence you know the 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 mothers and the children are having way okay that is observation and then secondly have a routine reflection learn from success and learn from failure okay uh we had a whole uh experience on that learning from success and failure and then um people that add value to themselves have such a generosity and the reason i call it such a generosity they don't give things to be seen to be doing you know you know the things where you know you you give away you go you buy rice and then you take it to an orphanage and then you take pictures and then you post on your you post on your whatsapp ah here i had a lovely day and then uh, you 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 know you go on your instagram and you post and you know they, they, i think there's a verse in the bible that talks about people that love to be seen when they are giving and their reward is in the things that they give okay so people that increase value in themselves they have subtle generosity they don't make a lot of noise about what they give i know a rich man in this city and this guy gives around 700 million to orphans i know a guy every christmas him and his family you know they wake up you know they will go to, to for christmas service on the 24th on the 25th they sleep, they you know they they cook food and they they put it in a uh, foil and then they carry uh, raw food rice and everything and they drive from kampala to karamoja and they feed the people in karamoja and they drive and they come back and they've done that for years and no one knows they have such a generosity okay and then have quiet persistence quiet persistence is that you, you know you don't make so much noise about it uh, i'm reminded there's a deal that we just closed at our company but i started chasing this deal in 2017 my team even doesn't know we started chasing the deal in 2017 we have it today a new market in tanzania is open to us and we are going in there that is quiet persistence okay and then uh another strategy for you to add value to yourself 
is is unclo- undisclosed mentorship. You know a book called uh, Rich Dad Poor Dad. Do you know that guy has never disclosed who the rich dad is? Yeah, people have mentors. They just never talk about them. Okay, and then um, outline everyone. Okay, and then strategically network. Networking uh, and uh, we're having a, a special guest <laughs> on the seventh that is going to dis- we're going to discuss this whole thing of strategic networking, and you'll discover that networking is not about how many people you know but it's about the quality of people that you know and uh, people that are are greatly influential if you if you go to netflix right now and watch inside the mind of bill gates you'll see that bill gates does in his network he does not have so many people he has about he has between 12 to 18 people but those 18 people move the needle for him so again one of the strategies is to network but in a very strategic way we're going to discuss this, okay? And uh, speaking of uh, strategic network, um, I've invited one uh, one of the first people that I worked with at Sudesh International. She has gone on to open an organization that works with women, and she's doing absolutely well. Uh, I'll reveal the name um, as we go on. Uh, she'll be on the next space. You want to hear from her. She knows what it means to network with her president she knows what it means to network with ambassadors and she knows what it means to network with uh, corporations with people like you and i okay so you want to look out on that and if you're a woman you you, you want to you know to watch out for this because you you will learn how to to use your empowerment to enhance the livelihood of others okay but look out for that on 7th of november so the other thing uh, the other thing is uh, the other strategy the, the last one because of time is unseen sacrifices people that add value to themselves have unseen sacrifices there are things that they do that you never see you know they wake up you know i think it was muhammad ali that said when you're on the road running at 5 a.m no one is watching they only see you when you're under the lights you know Today, I stand before, I have the privilege of standing, I have the privilege of standing before hundreds and thousands of people and coaching some of the best people in this continent and on this continent. But what you have not seen are lots of unseen sacrifices, things that I've done, you know, being on the road at 3 a.m., being on the bus for 30 hours and, and having nothing to eat. I, I'm not saying this because, uh, because you know, all that thing is to be glorified, but there's been a lot of sacrifice. Going years on without a salary, but making sure that I'm adding value to myself. These are all things that uh, I've done that never get to see the light of day, that get to, uh, to make me the man I am today. So those are on the side of strategies like i said it's strategies the story and the state so the other part that you want to take care of is the story what is the story now people never outperform their self-image the way you see yourself the bible says as a man thinketh so is he yeah people never outperform their self-image the way you see yourself if you see yourself as someone that is worth five hundred thousand, that is what you're going to be worth, and that is what they will give you. No discount, no nothing. That's what they will give you. You know, the value we place on ourselves is the value others place on us. The, if you see value in yourself and you place that value in yourself, that's what that that value. That's what the value. That's that value will be seen by others. Okay. And ladies know this very well. Um, you know, the the value a lady places in herself is what a guy will see. If she does not place value in herself, uh, she'll be taken there. You know, she. Uh, okay, I don't want to go so much into that. Anyway, so speaking of a story, what is a story? A story is a story consists of your thoughts, your feelings, your needs, and wants. A story can be defined. Uh, as a way you view your life okay so you tell you you tell this and how this is how your story impacts you you tell yourself a story that is the way you see your life okay 
let's say you see yourself as a loser and that is the story you tell yourself okay that means your thoughts are those of a loser your feelings are those of a defeated person so you're walking down with dr shoulders dropping down you don't need much because your needs are not that high and you don't want much out of life okay and when you tell yourself a story and you view yourself like that that will determine what you focus on what you focus on will determine the, your behavior your behavior will determine your character your character will determine your lifestyle let me say that, that let me say that again your story will determine your focus your focus will determine your behavior your behavior will determine your character your character will determine your lifestyle okay so it is important for you to see the value that is in you okay or get around someone that can identify that value in you that is why one of the strategies is to have a mentor and when that mentor starts to see the value in you they, they should look in your face and tell you hey look okay and i look Sudesh, there's a treasure in you and you're like what there's a treasure in me and the more they say it, the more you believe it and you start believing. When you start believing it, you tell yourself, there's a treasure in me, 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 there's a treasure in me. And then your story changes from, I don't know who I am, to look, I may not know exactly what I need to do right now. But one thing I know is that there's a treasure in me. I am limitless and I'm finding it every day. Now, this is not just motivational stuff. This is you changing the story because when you change your story, you change your life. Okay, so strategy, story, and then the last thing is the steps. Okay, most people know about the strategies. Now you know about how to change your story because when you change your story, you change your life. But how about the steps? What is state? State is the internal representation of who you are. It's how, it's what is on the inside of you that no one sees but when we look at you we can know that man that guy is confident we know when you give that guy something he will deliver okay i usually tell my customers when they have some doubt i tell them hey look my name is sudesh and i'll get the job done okay um and i think i've, I've given this uh and, and that sounds like cocky, but I know who I am. I know what I'm made of. I know the treasure in me. I know how limitless I am. And I know how to find those ends to make things work. I, I think I've given this uh, story uh, years ago. It should have been seven years ago. I walk into, uh, walk, walk into one of the clients' places. is a hotel. And then they had interviewed about two professors before me. And the general manager looks at me and says, Hey, young man, I don't think we're going to give you this job. My general manager doesn't like you. I don't think you can help our team to increase their sales. And I told him, hey, wait, 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 wait. Sir, I respectively disagree with what you're saying. If you're saying because I'm young, I cannot deliver value. I think you're wrong. Okay. If value means, if value means having a having a phd and delivering something then the professors are your guys but if value means you know someone having been in the trenches and having results i'm your guy i have sold i have led a sales team i've been successful at it i've failed but i've learned from my failures and that's why i'm here give me a chance and i told this guy look if your people come for the first session and they don't like what I'm, I'm saying or the value that I'm adding, let's put it in the contract. I'll refund you all the money that you're supposed to pay me. And the guy sits back. He says, ah, you know what? I, I, I like your enthusiasm. I'm going to take a chance on you, but don't let me down. Okay. To cut the long story short, I go do the training after the first session. He comes out. Of his office he talks to these guys he tells him how was sudesh they say sudesh was amazing and from then onwards we've been friends we keep in touch why because my state and the way i viewed myself was as of someone that is coming to deliver value and that is how i internalize who i am so what what is state exactly i i can I, i'm not going to give you a, a definition per se but let me define it this way, okay? You all have the way you take in information. You either see something, you hear it, you smell it, you taste it, you, 
you know you do some self talk that's how that's the way we we take in things you know uh, either solids or words so all the senses see hear smell feel taste or do some self talk now when you take in those things they are filters okay and what the filters are you can either delete distort or generalize let's say uh if you hear there was a bombing there was a bombing in israel okay your first th- you and, and if they tell you that the guy who bombed is called joseph kony you're going to say no joseph joseph cannot bomb it should be akram or mahli or mahli <laughs> like <laughs> like why because we generalize that all the bombers have to come from a certain religion and they have to come from a certain part of the world so we either delete or distort or generalize okay sometimes when you hear something you say ah no i think that is a woman oh that is a man oh all men are what oh all men are oi all women are what you know we 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 do all sorts of filters the other filters are your values beliefs expectations attitudes or actions so when you consume information you either delete it distort it generalize it you'll see it based on your values your beliefs your expectations your attitudes or your actions and based on all those filters you will give meaning to something that meaning will create a state a state is like that inner push yeah that powers your behavior and then the your behavior will lead to the action the action will lead to the result and the result will lead to the life so a state is your way of being it's like that system of internalization of information and what you make of it and the meaning that you give it okay so state is the meaning that you give things so the way you add value to yourself using strategy story and state is that first of all give the things the right meanings what it's not a failure it's a, an opportunity okay and then tell yourself an empowering story and then find some find strategies to help you along the journey okay uh with that said ladies and gentlemen we've come to the end of today's session let me see if we have uh, any questions and then uh, i'll answer these and be back okay um let me see let me see if we have any question let me see if we have any question all right so uh this one is saying how what is the fastest way eh? yes what is the fastest way of doubling my income okay all right this is a great question what is the fastest way of doubling your income let's say let's say you are making uh, a million a month what is the fastest way of you doubling your income to 2 million uh, 2 million in in, uh, in a month now i have a financial coach that can take you deep on this but the the philosophy and all strategies for this is to number one realize that you're not going to double it next month okay you might not double it next month because the mind the mind that is making 1 million has to change to a mind that is capable of making 2 million before you actually make that uh, 2 million so the be- the fastest way for you to to double the income is uh, number one, find find uh, be exposed to to be exposed to uh, a financial coach that can help you to look at strategies but also the other thing that you want to do is um, have have a three way uh, plan on how to double that are you going to are you going to double that by increasing what what you're selling uh, like i'll give you an example uh, when I, when i started consulting i wasn't doing you know i would wait for someone like you you know you're coming you know you you, you want a team build then you hire me then you pay me then i don't see you again and uh, and then i wait for some other client and that put me in a place where it was hard to run and and pay even salaries because you're not sure how that is going to happen so my quickest strategy was to first of all have a plan on um, 
how much money um if i'm doubling my income um let's say out of the 1 million how much of that is going to come from an increase let's say in my business or for you how much of it is going to come from your allowances and things like that and how much of it do you need to make everywhere somewhere else because now let's say you make a million you might find out that let's say 400,000 might come from extra allowances that you 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 will get from your your workplace because you're engaged in different activities but the 600,000 might need to come from some other business that you get involved in but remember when you get involved in that business you're investing in that business and then you have to wait for it to give you return so that's why i told you it might not happen within a month it might happen within a year okay so it is important for you to have a strategy and be committed to that strategy okay uh let me see if i have any other question yeah i think uh, i think that's it uh we've come to the end and uh, the next uh, session will be on the 7th of november where we'll be talking about strategic networking i hope you have loved this as much as i have and now i told you if you stick up to the end i have a surprise for you okay and that surprise is very simple um if you can dm me that's direct messaging uh dm uh, us on uh, at consult sudesh i'll give you one hour one free hour of coaching on how to plan for 2024 this plan there's a general plan but then there's a plan that is that is tailored to you as a person okay so i'm willing to do that for the first five people that can dm and just say uh hey sudesh i listen to you and i want to uh, i want that one hour and then we'll get in touch with you okay there are some other questions here what is your definition of success and how has it evolved over time Okay, my definition of success is me impacting. Uh, my definition of success is how many people I'm able to impact. Yeah, initially it was how much money I used to make, but now if you look at even our strategies, we, we measure it in how many people we are impacting. Okay, is it to the billions? Because if we can do that, uh, ultimately we'll get the money. Uh, how do you handle setbacks and maintain motivation when facing challenges on the road to success? How do I handle setbacks? Ah, man. Uh, setbacks are not the easiest thing to handle, especially if you want to win all the time. But for me, it's to look at the, the bigger picture. I remember one time, uh, you know, I'm, I'm building this business and I'm on the verge of quitting. I, I mean, I was done. I was ready to go back and get a job because business was tough and uh, you know i remember my coach um, taking me to his office pulled out files and showed me how much he was making in a day and told me if you stay on this journey you will get exactly what i'm showing you if you go right now and get a job you're going to abort everything that you've been working on so for me it's always looking at the bigger picture but also asking myself what am i missing what am i missing that i'm not seeing is is there a way we can tweak one or two things what am i missing what am i missing and when you ask the right questions the answer will will will, will, will show up um then uh, can you provide some practical strategies and tips for setting up and achieving meaning goals uh that i will do for the first five people that uh want that um are there any common misconceptions about success and failure that you would like to address yeah, uh, misconceptions about success and failure. I think I addressed them earlier. But the, the one that I want to uh, highlight is this, this notion that when you get what you're chasing, you're going to be happy. No, you're not going to be happy chasing things. What is going to make you ultimately happy is the progress that you have in life and making sure that you're better today than you were tomorrow. Okay? All right. So, with that said, I can see the uh, the one hour, uh, the first five people. One person has already taken the one hour, so we'll get to do that. Uh, we'll reach out privately, and then we'll fix that. With that said, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. I hope you have had as much value as I've had. It's always a pleasure from me and the team. Adios, muchachos. Bye bye. I'm out.